Hey guys, welcome back to Cummins Repower Garage. I'm Steve Sanders, joined by Brittany Barella, here to talk about exhaust system considerations for your R2.8 turbo diesel installation. So the main part of the exhaust system that actually comes with your crate is your DOC. So your DOC is attached to the back end of your turbo, so your turbo out. So once your exhaust goes through the engine, it needs to leave and that's how it does. So this acts as your downpipe. Um, it is bolted onto the back end of your turbo. When you're doing your engine installation and actually fitting it into the frame, you can remove the DOC just for safekeeping, either at this bolted joint or on this V-band clamp. Both of those joints have gaskets in them. Uh, so if you are taking them apart, make sure those gaskets stay intact and, and stay uh, in good condition so that you can put them back together again. Uh, the other point you can note is this V-band, you're able to rotate your DOC along this V-band clamp. Um, so if for installation it makes more sense to route your exhaust kind of around anything, you can rotate your DOC on that. Uh, DOC is a diesel, diesel oxidation catalyst, which means it's taking the unburned hydrocarbons that don't get fully combusted through the engine and capturing those before the exhaust goes through the rest of your system. Um, it's a completely passive flow through device, so it's not, um, nothing's going to get clogged. Uh, we're not catching soot, so it's not a diesel particulate filter or a DPF. Um, so there's no regens to do, and the system does not require any DEF. It doesn't have an SCR, so you're not having to add in that diesel exhaust fluid. So definitely just a passive system. It definitely helps with the smell of your, you know, of your engine, especially during cold starts, and it just helps us meet those emissions regulations, keeping the engine nice and clean. No reason to take it off. Like I said, it acts as your downpipe, so all the benefit to you, none of the downsides of kind of the normal... Uh, after treatment that you're used to seeing on 2017 engines. Yeah, one thing about the DOC, I think that a lot of people that look at this engine and they think, well, that's the first thing I'm going to take off. Um, for whatever reason, they might think it's a performance benefit or whatever, it's not. Uh, I can say from the test vehicles we've had with and without them, it's definitely a benefit if you park in the garage or do a lot of cold starts. Even on a gas vehicle, a modern gas vehicle, when that catalyst is cold, uh, on the gasoline engine, it can let out kind of a, a nasty smell in your garage. This really helps clean that up uh, on our engine, so I wouldn't recommend taking it off. For fitment-wise, uh, we have this, this Jeep back here that really illustrates a narrow frame rail package with a passenger side differential to kind of show that in most applications, even with a passenger side differential, that's not going to be in the way. Um, so don't think that first and foremost you have to figure out how to delete this thing because there's no benefit to doing so. Um, the rest of your exhaust system from there, you've got this two bolt flange. We've got a drawing for that in the installation guide. If you don't want to make your own flange or exhaust connection to that, uh, the aftermarket does have some available online right now uh, that are kind of builder kits, weld on flanges that you could take to an exhaust shop if you don't want to do it yourself. And then you got to consider the rest of your exhaust system. So um, most of the vehicles that we've repowered so far, factory-wise, had a two and a half inch exhaust, kind of your standard for this light duty gas segment, uh, which is fine for this. Really, you want to watch out uh, for back pressure. You don't want to go smaller than that. Uh, maximum back pressure of about 5.8 PSI on this. And this DOC is not a muffler. So one of the benefits to a DPF is a DPF really does reduce the sound that comes through a tailpipe. This doesn't have that, so you still will want to run a muffler unless you want your neighbors to be really mad at you. So don't do that. Uh, standard gas muffler uh, is usually more than sufficient. Just watch that back pressure and restriction. Uh, hanging your exhaust, uh, you'll see this is rigid all the way up to the turbo, to the exhaust manifold, to the head. So you've got to have some kind of uh, flex in there. So if your exhaust system on your vehicle is hanging via those rubber hangers, that's more forgiving to not have a big flex pipe or bellow here. If it's rigid to your frame, you definitely need to have something in there uh, to allow the engine to move separately than the exhaust system. So check out the installation guide for more tips and tricks on that. Thanks. See you next time.